biophysical data information on how the system is functioning, because then you also get a, a quantitative approach towards uh, uh, identifying the problem. Um, and I think it, it helps if you use this uh, a supervisor system. First, look at the biophysical aspects of what, what characteristics do you actually matter for the provision of the ecosystem services, and how do functioning ecosystem services actually contribute to human well-being, um, which is basically, yeah. in, in a nutshell, the, the cascade diagram which we'll be seeing a lot during this whole conference. Um, and on the poster, which is right over there, uh, I try to illustrate um, this is Babiansko. This is the Kalka catchment, which Dieter told you about. It's a completely different world. But it's in both areas, it's about water, it's about biodiversity aspects, it's about water provision, it's about something agriculture related, I don't know, meat production or, or uh, crops. It's a party about ecotourism too. So what we're going to do, hopefully in the next phase of presence, is to send a bunch of students, we've actually started doing that already, a bunch of students to this area too, to together make an inventory of what the stakeholders find important, but also what the biophysical state of the system is before you can actually move on. So that's the current state of research that will be done in, uh, in, uh, in link with present students, and that's really, really nice. Um, of course, these results tell a story, but students tell the best stories. Uh, workshops, posters, six and one. Um, are there some students who would like to share some experience of the biophysical research that they've been doing, or any research, just maybe partly to motivate um, the students that will still be going, or just 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 any any kind of experience that you would like to share? Yeah. That's a story. Yes. Do I have to go up there or? Uh, no, well, it's up to you. Uh, I just did that. <laughs> yeah, so we picked the biggest room for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's good. Well, my name is Wilson. Um, I went there um, like, uh, when was it? Last summer? Well, your summer. Um, we're back in your summer now again, so <laughs> that's the thing. Um, I did the like, work on the on, um, on the spectrum on biophysical parts, um, looking at the monitoring plot. Um, they're setting up a monitoring plot at one of the hill slopes um, at uh, the land of a really, really nice farmer. And um, we're looking at uh, to make the circle complete of the water balance. And so we're looking at the soil moisture, we're looking at the rainfall, and um, what, what the plant is actually taking up. So we have tipping buckets to get the rainfall, both in the grade part as well as underneath the spectrum. So we can see how much of the rain actually falls through the spectrum. And what we found is that like quite a lot of rain is intercepted by spectrum and it has evaporated. Like, um, I think, what was it again, it's a while ago, and like 30 to 40% which is quite, quite a lot, especially if you think in the tropical area, it's like the same to even less. So that was quite an amazing uh, thing to discover. But then at the same time, looking at the sunburst probes, you could see that there's much more uh, moisture within the soil underneath the spectrum. So it also makes sense. Uh, if you go there, you will see that the water runs up really fast on the degraded part. Uh, which we also have measurements of actually, that's the third really. And um, well, beneath the spectrum, you can see like this water is infiltrating and actually it's kind of concentrated in, in a, a root zone area and it really stays there for, for weeks instead of um, if you looked at the soil moist and degraded area, it's just spikes of water coming in, it stays there for a day or two, maybe three, and then it disappears. So, yeah, and the other thing was then with the runoff. Um, it's like, what was it again? I think, yeah, we need to. You, you resolved some of the posts in the Oh, as well. Ah, no, that's good. I don't know uh, the perfect number anymore. I can remember something like an 80% reduce of runoff, which is a lot. So, yeah, that, that was it in the next But it's also the first time. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe some other vegetation that doesn't intercept as much, but still.
Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so. Sorry, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we only focused on spec well for now because that's also the, the plan we use for restoration and the dominant plant in the subtropical thicket. But of course, I mean, if you have spec well, there's a lot of other plants um, kind of um, arising as well because it is perfect, it, it creates a perfect environment for <coughs> species to emerge. But it's a, it's a really good question. It's if I can just yeah. respond to that as well, the, uh, the sorry, maybe I should use it right back to people when I respond. <laughs> um, the, the, what, what's important to that area, it's got a very, uh, it's got very dry, intense dry seasons. And what, what this, or what other research has shown, that's the critical area when water security starts playing a role. So you would much rather lose the interception by the spec pool than, than losing your low flows. Uh, so you want to you want to maximize low flows and optimize uh, uh, overall flows. So it's not all about uh, maximizing flows. It's it's optimizing flows with maximizing low flows. But the big statement is basically even more. Uh, I suspect you're going to lose. You're going to have an increased high flows. The, 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 the kind of vegetation that I can think of is, is, uh, is uh, it's, a, it's a grass species, very cynodon um, um, grass species, very hard grass, which you most probably have very little interception. Although it's so dense, you never know what would happen. Um, that, that, uh, and then a very fast uh, flood flows or high flows. But I think the other thing we need to realize is, first of all, in the Bavi or in the total East Cape, it's a really arid area. It doesn't restore. It will stay like that forever. So there have been trials being done and research being done with other species, and they die. It's just not possible. And the spade bomb is the only species that can, can survive in that arid environment. And what we try to do, what the project tries to do, is bring that uh, ground cover back and then all the plants can come back and be merged in that environment. Mm -hmm. And it's a CAM C3 plant, so it can switch between them. Don't ask me how, yeah. <laughs> I'm just knowing that it can. So when it's really dry, it can benefit when it's really wet. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing why we looked at spec bones, because that's the only species to use on the moment.